Now at 10, today is Overdose Awareness Day. Hear from local advocates who are shining a light on addiction straight ahead. Plus, a deadly home invasion in Jackson left one person dead, three people wanted, and a 10-month-old kidnapped. Hear from neighbors in the area tonight. And rain chances are going to increase for your Friday here across the area. We'll tell you how it could impact those Friday night football games coming up. Your News at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Carrie Leggett Brown. A Jones County teen has been missing since Tuesday. Now law enforcement is asking for your help. Please take a look at your screen. Jones County Sheriff's Department says Jaden Gunner Williamson was last seen Tuesday morning in Ellisville. Williamson is 5'10", has brown hair, brown eyes, and a cloud tattoo on his left forearm. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Jones County Sheriff's Department or Crime Stoppers. Well, Jackson police investigating tonight after a man is found dead and a 10 month old was kidnapped yesterday from a West Jackson home. Police arrested one of the suspects, 23 year old Jasmine Johnson. Johnson was the birth mother or is the birth mother of that 10 month old baby. And the 42 year old man who was shot and killed is the boyfriend of Johnson's mother who had full custody of the child. Now, according to Jackson police, officers found a man shot multiple times around 930, then found out the child was kidnapped. One person who lives in the neighborhood says the area hasn't had incidents like this in a long time. I didn't see nothing but people coming in and out, trying to come down on the tape. They wouldn't let them come on the tape because was a, they said it was a crime scene. And I, I wasn't walking around with my gun on my side, but it's going to make me start. And then, especially at night, I keep a walk and wrench it because I be there by myself sometimes. Johnson has been arrested and charged with capital murder, but there are still three other suspects who remain on the run tonight. In other news for you, Pine Belt, in 2022, 281 Mississippians lost their lives to opioid-related overdoses. That's according to the Mississippi Department of Health. Now, today is Overdose Awareness Day. It's a time to remember those who lost their lives. Our Emily Blackmar went out to the annual candlelight vigil at Moore's Bicycle Shop and talked to those who understand the heartbreak of addiction. This is Lori Sanford. She came out to the second annual Overdose Awareness Day Memorial to share her story of addiction and recovery and honesty. She says the truth is the battle is hard. You would think that at 51 you would just grow out of it, but you don't. When you really suffer from a disease of addiction, you don't grow out of it. You really have to be supported through it. You really have to seek out the right help for you. That's what this gathering at Moore's Bike Shop was all about. Help and support. Being there for those battling addiction, recovering, and being there for families who never see their loved ones again. Like James Moore, he became an advocate for those struggling with addiction after he lost his son to an overdose in 2015. Some are people who are in long-term recovery, but many of them are families like us that are still coping with the loss, you know, wishing we could have done something better that would have made a difference in the life of those that we've lost. Sanford says one difference people can make is separating the disease from the person because addiction isn't a moral failing. It would really help if family and friends and communities realize that separate the disease from the person, see past the disease. That's my goal in advocating. Reporting in Hattiesburg, Emily Blackmore, WDAM 7, on your side. And remember, you can now get naloxone, the life-saving overdose reversal medicine, at pharmacies around the state without a prescription. And you can also get it sent to you at no cost through the Department of Health. You can go to odfree.org for more information. Well, looking ahead, the Mississippi Highway Patrol's Labor Day enforcement period begins at 6 tomorrow morning. You will see more state troopers on the interstate and highways. Troopers will be making sure you're wearing your seatbelt and cracking down on impaired drivers. The enforcement blitz ends Monday at midnight. 
All right, Patrick, I'm ready to savor the cooler weekend and rain before it heats right back up again. Yeah, the rain is going to be the big part of why we're going to cool down this weekend. Uh, it's just mainly because it's going to be raining and we'll have cloud cover and that's going to cool us down into the 80s. We'll talk more about that coming up. But right now, speaking of cooler weather, right now we're sitting at 80 degrees. That's a live look from the Mississippi Power Sky Cam out at the campus of Southern Miss this evening. Midtown Hattiesburg looking pretty as always. You'll notice though on Southern Pine Electric Radar, we got a few little blips. Notice that almost due south to due north movement. That right there's a few light sprinkles that are coming in. We got a feed of moisture sitting up here across South Mississippi, so I'm not surprised to see that. Came with a lot of few sprinkles overnight, but it will definitely start to see those rain chances increasing by tomorrow. Temperatures at the moment are sitting into the 80s. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll break down those rain chances hour by hour and tell you how they can impact those Friday night football games. All that and more in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Patrick. 17 Dixie Electric employees headed out this morning to help those who need it most. Recently impacted by Hurricane Idalia, there are more than 18,000 people without power through the company Central Florida Electric. The workers are going to help restore power for the customers of Central Florida Electric and will be in Florida for the next seven to 10 days. A Laurel Church who knows what it means to be in need after a hurricane. Now it's preparing to take supplies to victims of Hurricane Idalia. The members of Laurel's Trinity Baptist Church have started a new disaster relief drive for victims of Idalia. Now the church is collecting cleaning supplies, non-perishable food, and personal hygiene items. Monetary donations are also being taken. The church will deliver those supplies to the folks at the First Baptist Church in the storm-ravaged Florida town of Cedar Key. We need your help, especially the people in Cedar Key in that area. And the reason that we partner with, with a church is who knows better than a church of what a community needs. And that's the reason that we always try to partner with a, a church. Now church members will load this trailer with the supplies and will head to Cedar Key yeah, yeah. on September 8th. Donations are being accepted Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. and also this Sunday from 2 to 5. You can also find a list of all the supplies the church is accepting on our website. Jones College fans were eager to see some of their favorite players at the Night with the Bobcats event. It was a night for the community to come together and show its support for Jones College athletics. Our Trey Howard has reactions from both fans and players. Hey, it's a great day to be alive. Go Bobcats! Woo! That kind of excitement seemed contagious on the campus of Jones College at the Night with the Bobcats event where fans had the chance to interact with Jones College athletes. Tonight is all about fun, family, and friends. Coming out here, the whole community, getting together, yeah. mixing sports, football, basketball, yeah. soccer, yeah. cheer, everybody. We're out here just having fun, yeah. enjoying each other. Just one week away from kickoff, expectations are high for the Bobcats. Pretty pumped for the season. Uh, the football team's winning it all, probably, if I had to guess. Before then, the football team, along with other Jones College athletes, received recognition for their various accomplishments last season. We're one of a kind. Everyone knows Jones basketball, so we represent. The night was full of smiles as fans played games, sang songs, hey, hey, hey. and watched live performances. I feel good to see everybody come out today, just come support us, and that's real, feel real good that we got the whole Ellisville community behind us. After the event, fans were invited to stick around and watch some Thursday night college football. In Ellisville, Trey Howard, WDAM7, on your side. All right, well, the Bobcat football team begins their season on September 7th as they travel to Fulton to take on Itawamba. Still ahead at 10, a new sculpture unveiled today in Columbia hopes to bring the community together. Details about what inspired it. Thank you.